Welcome back everybody, Dexter here with Current Connected. Today we're doing a little bit of a different video. We're actually installing some equipment. So today I have a Victron Multi Plus 48 2000 here on the ground. And this is our server rack here that runs our entire operation here at Current Connected. It's very critical that this stay online so that we can provide some of the best customer service in the industry because this handles all of our phones and that sort of thing. So we want to make sure if we ever have a power outage that this doesn't go down. So I reconfigured this rack recently. I have two of the SOK 48 volt batteries down in the bottom and I'm going to be putting this Multi Plus 48 2000 here in the back. And I just kind of wanted to show you guys what this looks like in our application uh, to give you some ideas if you're planning to do your own install. So getting started, I want to do a little bit of a tour of the rack. Up here we have the KVM switch and um, keyboard screen and mouse here on the uh, rack. Um, behind the monitor is the actual server with a little computer that runs our music for out in the warehouse. Dropping down below, we have our power distribution unit, our f incoming fiber, router, patch panel, and 10 gig fiber switch and also our 48 volt PoE switch that runs all of our phones and uh, cameras within the building. And then dropping down there is the amplifier for the music and then the two 48 volt batteries. I have a drawer in here and some open space for future expansion. And then coming around the back here, you can see we have all of our cables for the power distribution unit and those feed into the various pieces of equipment. And then for the time being, we have a little tiny APC UPS, and it really struggles because this rack idles at about 700 watts of load. And as we add more stuff, this thing is just gonna become completely overwhelmed. It currently gives us about eight minutes of backup runtime, and we're gonna dramatically increase this by adding the 10 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate storage. To mount the inverter, I took one of these rack shelves here and put it vertical in the back of the rack. I just wanted to make sure it fit. I'm now gonna pull that shelf off and that will be what I mount all of our Victron components to. Ideally, Victron should make a rack mount inverter, but for the time being, this is the best we can do. So this is that shelf we just pulled out of the back. I'm essentially gonna mount the inverter on here and I'm also gonna include a uh, Servo GX and a couple other things here. Um, so this is what we're starting with. The inverter comes with one of these French cleats that I'm going to use three self-tapping screws to mount it to this plate. So that'll go somewhere roughly in here. And then um, the inverter will just hang on that once I put the shelf back in the rack. So there we go. I got that bracket mounted and cut the tips of the screws off where they stick out behind. Now that inverter can just set down on there like that. Hook in place exactly where I need it. And there we go, with that put in place, you can see I clear the top, it'll hook on. Once I get it in the rack, there are two screws down here in the bottom that will go in place. I know it's a little bit dark, but there's the screw holes there. That's where we're gonna mount it so that this thing can't come off. And then we have our AC input and output connections here that will get some cords put on. And for a cord, I have this extension cord that was a one in and three out, and it's stripped right here because I use this with a clamp meter for some current measurement and I don't need it for that anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it at this point. It's about a foot from the end and then wire it into the inverter. So that way I have the cord that'll go to the wall and the output that goes to the rest of the server rack. In the wiring compartment, there's these little white clamps and they have a seven millimeter nut on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those up. That way I can get my uh, cable in there and clamp it on. Um, there are these uh, little uh, boots here. I'll get you a close up on those. These just smash and pull out here. And you theoretically can cut these and make it match exactly your cable so that nothing can get in or out of there. Now I mentioned this in a previous video and the funny thing is this compartment here has a cover with vent holes. So I made that comment in a previous video that it was to keep dust and water from getting in and I failed to realize that there is a open compartment here. So in my case, I'm just gonna omit them. I'm just gonna put the cord right in through here. I don't have any fear of it having any burrs that rub through. So uh, yeah, I will um, omit those for the time being and just run my cord right into this clamp, get it into the terminals and then tighten the clamp down. 
Now this cord is a three conductor 12 gauge cord, so we're good for 20 amps, so we should have no issue carrying the full output of this inverter or bringing the full input of the inverter while the batteries are charging. So I removed the top half of these clamps entirely so I can just freely shove the wire in here. Now I typically like having a service loop so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these uh, wires in here like that and go ahead and get these screws tightened down. And then once those screws are in I'm actually going to shove some more cable in here so that I could actually bite down on the insulation of my cord with that clamp. And I have a little bit of extra in here, so it's not just cut at the absolute shortest length possible. Ideally, I would have stripped a little bit more of this jacket so it can flex a little bit more, but in this case, it's not the end of the world. It'll be fine here. So yeah, now I got those connections in. You can see I have my little bit of extra slack in here. And that's really nice because if these cords ever get pulled, um, I'm trying to pull on this right now. You can see there's no extra stress on the terminals. Some guys make these as short as possible going to the terminals. And I don't like that because if the cord gets yanked, it's immediately putting the stress right on the connection point. And that's not good. Jumping on over to the DC side, I have this cabling connection kit here. Uh, we sell these on our site, currentconnected.com, um, already, you know, pre-set up with a fuse in here. I have an 80 amp mega fuse. And essentially, I'm gonna come off of these two terminals in here, mount the fuse right here close to the inverter. Um, these are two gauge, they only need to be six gauge, but I had this one laying around from when our uh, photographer did the product photos. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and just mount this fuse holder right on this plate. So there we go with those cables in the inverter and mounted. I can then go ahead and put this fuse holder right in here and then there's two screw holes that I can use to mount it to the metal plate. Next thing I'm gonna mount is a Serbo GX so that we can monitor this whole system from anywhere in the world through the internet. I'm gonna put it approximately right there. There are just four screw holes on it that hold it down to the plate. And I'm just gonna use some sheet metal um, self-tapping screws for that as well. There is a red and black cable, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the terminals in the inverter to give this power. This cable has a little fuse holder built into it. That way this is properly protected from overcurrent. All that's needed now is to set up the communication between the inverter and the Serbo GX. So I have just a standard network cable here and I'm gonna plug it into one of the VE bus ports in the inverter. Then on top of the Serbo GX, I'm gonna plug it into any of the corresponding VE bus ports and then the unused ports don't need anything in them. No terminators or anything like that. Now all that's left to do is throw on the bottom cover and tighten up the two screws that hold it on and now we're good to go. I can go ahead and get this whole thing mounted in the server rack. And look at that, we got that shelf in and mounted. You can see the inverters on the left, the blinking lights down in there, that's the Serbo GX. And then I did route the cable out for a uh, touch screen out here, but most of our access on this will be through Victron's VRM system. Bringing you over, you can see our cord just comes down. We go into our UPS still, just for the time being, because I do need to do some firmware updates. I'm not 100% confident quite yet in the Victron system as I do some of those changes. And then you can see the big fat cord going to the uh, audio amplifier that runs the warehouse. I got my cables around the front just kind of temporarily hooked up. I've got my CAN bus and RS-232 connections landed, so that's working for now and uh, we're using the communications on the battery as the battery monitor, so there is no additional smart shunt, for example, added to this setup. And this is that GX touchscreen here. You can see we're running about 500 watts of constant load, so it's a little bit lower than usual, but this does run 24-7. So here is our final result. I've got the side and top of that rack installed. And if we go around the back, it gives a really nice clean look back here. We've obviously got the server up here, our cables enter. Nice big opening for heat to exhaust out. I cut off all those screw heads so it's nice and safe. And then we just have our big orange cord that goes into the wall. I wish there was an outlet a little bit closer, but Anyway, disregard that taken apart multi-plus right there. There's nothing to see here, nothing at all. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and we plan to see you in the next video. So hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you later.